welcome back. One of the illusions that we live with is the belief that if something exists in front of us, we see it, or hear it, or taste it. And if it doesn't exist, then we don't detect it, that it's not there. That's an illusion. Uh, it turns out that understanding when and how we're able to detect the presence of something is really complicated. So we have to come up with these sort of nuanced terms. And one of them is absolute threshold. You would think absolute threshold meant the threshold at which we could detect something every time. But no, because detection is complicated, an absolute threshold is defined as the minimum amount of energy in some sensory system. So the minimum amount of light or the minimum amount of sound that we need to detect something accurately 50% of the time, half the time. That's an absolute threshold. So, um, you may have had the experience that sometimes your cell phone rings or vibrates and you miss it. And sometimes you think your cell phone has rung or vibrated and it hasn't. So, within that context, an absolute threshold for detecting someone uh, calling you or something happening on your cell phone is the minimum amount of energy that you need to detect that ring or that buzz half the time, 50% of the time. Or, since we're living in Southern California, uh, there are earthquakes of all different strengths, right? There are really big earthquakes that everybody feels, and there are really teeny earthquakes, like a 1.5, that almost everybody misses. So the question is, what's the minimum amount that the room has to shake before you detect that there is an earthquake half the time. That's the absolute threshold. What are some typical absolute thresholds? Well, I've listed four here. Uh, for us, if, um, for typical folks who are sighted, um, if you are in the dark and you've been in the dark for a while, you can detect the light of the flame of one candle from a mile away. Pretty impressive. For sound, you can detect the ticking of one of those old-fashioned analog clocks, the one with the faces and the hands that go around. You can hear that ticking from 20 feet away, which is about um, 20 feet, 6 to 7 meters. For smells, if you live in an apartment that has six rooms, you can smell one drop of perfume. Or from touch, um, if we're talking about the back of my hand, if I were to take two or three of my hairs and press it, then I could feel that 50% of the time. If there was only one hair, I couldn't. So those are some typical absolute thresholds. And when we talk about absolute thresholds, you'll see a curve like this one on your right. On the vertical axis of that curve is the percentage of time a subject actually saw something that was almost always there. On the horizontal axis is stimulus intensity. So let's stick with vision and talk about the brightness of a light. Let's imagine that we could change how bright a light was continuously. Um, if that light was completely off, then we would say there is no light, there's nothing there. But if it's super dim, there's going to be a period of time where that light bulb is so dim that you can't see it you'll say, no, there's nothing there. And then there's going to be a point where, or a section where, the light is still dim, still very dim, but bright enough that every once in a while you see it. Right? That can be a big segment. When you hit that 50% line, that's the absolute threshold. And then, of course, you can keep going with the brightness of a light bulb so that all sighted people see it all the time. Pay attention to that curve. Notice that S shape. We're going to come. We're going to compare that later. How well do we detect the presence of a stimulus? Well, we're not as good as we think we are. Sometimes we detect things, or we think that there's something there when there isn't. Um, for example, I cannot watch scary movies 
um, on TV when I'm home alone, uh, because every time I hear, uh, watch a scary movie, I become super sensitive to the sounds that are outside my home. So if a tree is rubbing against um, a window, I become super sensitive to the, that sound, and not only do I detect the sound is there, but every time I interpret it as, oh my God, someone's coming into the house. Have you ever had that experience? Okay. Nobody's coming into the house. That's just um, something that happens when your expectations or your context gets shifted. And as you know from the previous lecture, how well we detect something or how we interpret something depends on the context. But have you ever reached for your cell phone expecting there to be a new text or phone call because you think you heard something or felt something vibrate and there's nothing there? No, nope, you're not crazy. That's just the way detection works. Uh, have you ever thought you felt an earthquake and there wasn't one? Yeah. Sometimes we think something's there and it isn't. And psychologists call that a false alarm. A false alarm. Our belief that something is there and it's not. Sometimes we miss things that are there. And psychologists call those, thankfully, misses. So, um, for example, have you ever been lost and you're wandering around and eventually you decide, okay, I'm going to ask for directions. You stop somebody that's right in front of you, you ask for directions, and the building that you're looking for is right there. The sign is, you know, six feet tall. The letters were there, you just missed them. Um, have you ever been in a coffee shop and picked somebody else's coffee up as yours? You've missed your cup of coffee. Uh, have you ever had the experience where a text came in or someone called and you didn't hear the sound or feel the vibration? That's another example of a miss. So, the two graphs that are here give us a comparison between how we think the world works and how it actually works. We live with the belief or delusion that if something's there, we're going to detect it every time. Part of that's based on the belief that something is either there or not there. Either there's a sound or there's no sound. And we believe that if there's a sound, we'll hear it. If there's not a sound, we won't. But the reality is that uh, stimulus energy, how bright a light is, how loud a sound is, how rough a piece of paper feels, um, those kinds of energy very continuously, they vary smoothly, which is why on the right it's not a step function, it's not a step, but it's a smooth S curve. Um, sometimes things are there, we miss them. Sometimes nothing's there and we think there is, so we have both misses and false alarms. What do you call it if you can detect something that's just barely there or you have sort of a gut feeling that it's there, but you don't actually know for sure. Okay. There's something called a subliminal threshold. So an absolute threshold is when you can detect something 50% of the time. A subliminal threshold is when you detect something below the absolute threshold. When you detect something that's actually there, but it's less than your absolute threshold. Um, that is, sometimes we detect things that are below our conscious awareness of them. And I want to give you an example. Companies know all about subliminal thresholds. So you may have seen these ads for FedEx or Amazon or Baskin Robbins, which is an ice cream store. So FedEx is a company that delivers things. It wants you to, it wants to convey the message that it's all about movement. And uh, in a previous lecture, we talked about how most people don't notice the big white arrow in the middle of the FedEx label. Right? At an unconscious level, you detect it, but consciously you don't. Amazon, part of their ad is about the fact that they have everything from A to Z, right? They have everything. So what do they do? They put an arrow between, from A to Z in their logo. Baskin Robbins ice cream is known for having 31 different flavors of ice cream. Why do I remember that? I haven't been to a Baskin Robbins store in 30 years. 
35 years. Um, I'm sure their ice cream's great, it's just I can't do dairy. Uh, but I remember that they have 31 flavors. Why? Why do I remember that Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors? Because the number 31 is right in the middle of their logo. But most people don't notice. So, subliminal messaging. Messaging that's under, below our level of conscious awareness, where our brain detects something, but we're not aware of it. Is it real? Well, uh, brain imaging tells us it is. There are a number of studies out now that show that if you show me a subliminal message, maybe like the 31 in the Baskin Robbins um, logo, my brain reacts to it, even though I'm not aware of that reaction. Come back and we'll take the next step.